Another mystery buried deep in the hills of eastern Washington keeps resurfacing. A bottomless pit said to be a pathway to the paranormal. Located within the vicinity of Washington state is a mysterious hole that has puzzled scientists for decades. Recently, a drone was sent into this mysterious hole, and what was uncovered terrifies the whole world. This hole in particular was discovered by a man named Mel Waters while walking through one of his property. One day while on his land, he made a strange discovery. Off in the distance, he spotted what looked like a well. But as he walked closer to investigate, he realized this was no ordinary well. It was a huge circular hole in the ground. Mel measured the diameter and found it was an impressive 9 feet and 9 inches wide. Surrounding the large opening was a stone retaining wall that was 15 feet long. After the wall, there was only complete darkness inside the hole. You couldn't see anything past the edge. Mel became curious about what was down inside the deep pit. At first glance, it seemed to have no bottom. To test this, he and the other locals began using the hole as a dumping spot for their garbage. They tossed all sorts of junk into it, from regular household trash to broken appliances and old tires. Even though a lot of debris was thrown into the hole, Mel noticed something strange. He never heard any of the items hitting bottom inside. You would expect to hear loud thuds as things fell deep down, but there was only silence. This was very odd and raised questions about the hole's depth. Another weird thing was that despite all the trash going in, the hole never appeared to get filled up at all. It was like the items were disappearing into an endless void. This added to the mystery of how deep it really went, and whether it truly had no bottom. After making his initial observations of the strange hole on his property, Mel began noticing some odd phenomena occurring around the area. Whenever he brought his dogs near the site, they seemed unusually anxious and reluctant to get close to the gaping opening. Their behavior was out of character, normally friendly and calm, but near the hole they acted nervous and on edge. Mel also started experiencing strange issues with electronics when in the vicinity. As an avid ham radio operator, he often had a radio on hand. But he found that as soon as he brought one within about 50 feet of the hole, the reception would become severely degraded. Severe static interference would overwhelm the radio, making it nearly impossible to tune in to any stations clearly. This was unusual, as he had never previously encountered such strong electromagnetic disturbances in that spot. Mel explained he threw his dead dog into the hole, and to his surprise, days later, he was shocked seeing his dog roaming around the area. The dog seemed totally strange, as it couldn't recognize him. However, he confirmed the dog was his from the color and size. But the dog really acted strange as if it never knew Mel Water, even after Mel call its name. This added more to the mystery, as how could a dead dog possibly come back to life? Naturally, these strange occurrences only served to heighten Mel's curiosity about the hole and what mysteries it held below the surface. He was determined to try and discover if it truly had no bottom, or if there was some explanation yet to be found. With his background as a fisherman, Mel had an abundance of spools of fishing line available to begin experiments. For his first test, he carefully selected a one-pound lead weight and securely fastened it to the end of a long fishing line. Taking care to pay out the line smoothly, he lowered the weight down into the Stygian darkness of the hole. But as the line played out end over end, disappearing into the void, he noticed something peculiar. No matter how far down he let out, the line did not stop or meet any resistance that would indicate bottom had been reached. By the time the entire 4,500-foot spool was emptied, still there was only empty space below. When he began reeling the line back in, Mel was even more perplexed to find the weight was completely dry. Having been lowered such a tremendous distance, one would expect it to have at least encountered some groundwater. But it showed no signs of ever making contact with anything during its long descent. Perplexed but still undeterred, Mel readied another spool to continue probing the depths of the bizarre hole. For his second attempt to find the bottom, Mel attached a roll of Lifesaver's candies to the fishing line rather than the lead weight. He lowered it down slowly, paying close attention for any signs of resistance. Yet again, the entire length of line played out freely with no obstruction. When Mel began reeling the line back in, 
He expected the lifesavers to at least be wet if the weight had encountered water deeper below. To his surprise, the candies were still completely dry when he retrieved them. It seemed no matter how far the items descended, they never made physical contact with anything at the base of the hole. This result perplexed Mel even more. He remained determined to get to the bottom of the mystery, quite literally. For his next experiment, Mel linked multiple spools of fishing line together to allow for an even greater length to be lowered. Down the line went, snaking its way endlessly into the darkness. But even after letting over 10,000 feet of line down, a distance of nearly two miles, there was no sign of reaching the bottom. The hole showed no signs of ending, seemingly dropping away indefinitely. Stumped but still curious, Mel resolved to devise an even more extensive test. He spent days meticulously joining dozens of spools together, creating a makeshift megaliner over 15 miles in cumulative length. Despite paying this immense line out bit by bit, the results were the same, nothing but empty space as far as the line could reach. At this point, Mel was faced with a mystery that had truly stumped him. He realized he would need help from outside experts to solve the incredible enigma. With his own experiments hitting a dead end, Mel began seeking guidance from others on how to further investigate the mysterious hole. In 1997, he came across Art Bell's late-night radio show at Coast to Coast AM. The program covered all kinds of paranormal and unexplained phenomena, making it a prime spot to share his strange story. On February 21st, Mel wrote a letter to Art detailing all of his experiences and findings with a bottomless pit on his property. He described throwing in truckloads of garbage without hearing impacts and sinking over 80,000 feet of fishing line that never reached a bottom. Mel was thorough in providing any information that may help explain the enigma. Within just a few hours of Art sharing Mel's story on air, it took off wildly in popularity. Suddenly, Mel was being flooded with calls from curious listeners all over the world. Many offered helpful suggestions on how to measure the hole's depth like using lasers or ground-penetrating radar. This gave Mel new avenues to explore with more advanced technology. While the widespread attention helped spread information, it also had unintended consequences. Now that millions knew about the anomalous hole, many people wanted to see it for themselves. Helicopters began hovering near Mel's property, as both civilians and government officials sought to investigate the bizarre pit. The hole and the area around it soon faced increased scrutiny and interaction from outsiders. This extra attention is what ultimately led to authorities becoming directly involved. Their intervention would further shroud the case in mystery. But for now, Mel was simply glad to have a platform to share his story and get guidance from others on how to solve the incredible puzzle. In the days following Mel's appearance on Coast to Coast AM, even more strange events began occurring near the mysterious hole. Mel claimed that one of his neighbors spotted an unusual black beam emanating up from the pit and cutting across the sky. Listeners of the radio program also started providing context about the area's history. They said that region of Washington was well known for UFO sightings and paranormal phenomena over the years. Disappearances had been reported there as well. This led many callers to theorize what the hole could be. Some proposed it was a portal or doorway to another dimension or point in time. Objects thrown in may have accumulated in strange piles elsewhere. Others speculated it could be a tunnel to the hollow earth theory of underground civilizations. As theories abounded, Mel arranged to return to Coast to Coast AM and give an update. But on the scheduled night, he failed to call into the program as planned. Now deeply worried for his safety, Art and others from the show decided to travel to Mel's property themselves. When they arrived though, they were met with an even bigger shock. According to Mel's precise descriptions, there was no visible hole to be found. All that remained was disturbed earth, as if the pit had been deliberately filled in. In its place were clues of organized military activity on the land. When Art Bell and his team found no trace of the hole but instead saw signs of military activity on Mel's property, it raised serious questions. What had really happened in the days since Mel's radio appearance? Not long after, some answers began emerging when Mel finally contacted Art again. Mel reported that upon returning home after the show, he found his property blocked off by armed personnel. They claimed an aircraft had crashed on his land, but Mel knew of no such incident. Stranger still, 
the men preventing Mel's access threatened to seize his property. They hinted false charges could be brought against him if he didn't comply. Furious yet fearful, Mel vowed to go public with his experience. But without proof, no one would believe him over government forces. Around this time, listeners provided some context that helped explain the military's interest. They noted the location was already considered a UFO hotspot with past incidents. Speculation grew that the hole might be connected to underground extraterrestrial activity. With his land and safety now under threat, Mel faced a difficult decision. Should he stand up to the mysterious forces and risk further danger, or reluctantly accept their terms? Events were taking a dire turn, and the truth behind the anomalous hole seemed destined to remain buried. Mel found himself in an incredibly difficult position given the threats and intimidation tactics being used against him. Facing the prospect of losing everything, he decided to reluctantly cooperate with the mysterious forces for the time being. A few days later, Mel received an unexpected offer to lease his property to the government for an enormous annual sum of nearly $3 million. However, there was a major catch. As part of the deal, Mel would have to immediately sign a non-disclosure agreement, pack up, and leave the country permanently without returning. Feeling he had no other choice, Mel took the deal. He departed the United States and settled in Australia, keeping silent about his experiences per the agreement. For years, it seemed his strange saga was finished. However, Mel's story was not over. About two years after relocating, he began missing his family still living in the US. Despite the risks, Mel covertly returned to visit them. But during this trip, another strange series of events would further cement the mysterious nature of his case. Upon arriving back in America, Mel planned to give Art Bell an update on the radio show. But on the scheduled night, he once again failed to call in. He then mysteriously lost over a week of time, waking up hundreds of miles from where he intended to be. When Mel suddenly regained consciousness in San Francisco with no recollection of how he got there, it only added to the strangeness of his situation. Even more disturbing was his physical condition, with needle marks, missing teeth, and pain in his arm. It seemed some kind of medical procedure had been performed on him against his will. But by whom and for what purpose remained a mystery. With his memory of the past 12 days completely erased, Mel had no answers. To make matters worse, he soon found himself in legal trouble back in Washington. Though he hadn't been there in years, Mel was being falsely charged with crimes like illegal construction on his old property. It appeared the mysterious forces were still actively working to ruin him. Word of these new troubling developments eventually reached Art Bell. Knowing Mel's credibility from their initial contacts, Art helped spread awareness of Mel's dire circumstances. This may have offered him some protection from further harassment, However, Mel had also clearly made new powerful enemies by his continued efforts to share his experience. It seemed they would stop at nothing to discredit and dispose of him. Though silenced for years, Mel's story was only just beginning its next strange chapter. The full truth of what lies beneath the land, and the forces working so hard to bury the matter, continue to evade full disclosure to this day. Even with Art Bell's help broadcasting Mel's plight, he remained in danger from the mysterious entities that had targeted him. Facing uncertain safety if he stayed in the US, Mel made the difficult choice to flee the country once more. He secretly left North America and disappeared, going into long-term hiding in an unknown location. For nearly a decade, Mel maintained absolute silence about his experiences. All contact with the outside world ceased. During this time in seclusion, the true scale of the cover-up surrounding Mel's anomalous hole came into clearer focus. Investigations found that government records of his property along with any photographic and physical evidence, had all been deliberately wiped from existence. It seemed immense effort was undertaken to rewrite history and ensure not even traces of documentation linking back to Mel's discovery could be found. The area itself showed signs of remediation, leaving no signs the reported hole was ever there. The level of revisionism implied this was no ordinary case. Powerful entities had intervened to systematically erase what Mel had uncovered on his land from all official records. Their motives remain deeply shrouded in mystery to this day. While in hiding, Mel had ample time to reflect on his experiences and what they could potentially mean. After so long away from the public eye, he would eventually resurface with a new perspective to share.
But that story will have to wait to be continued another time. In 2016, nearly two decades after his initial encounter, Mel Waters finally emerged from seclusion. He reached out to a private researcher who had been investigating his case for years. Mel was ready to cautiously share more of what he knew. Under conditions of anonymity, Mel granted the researcher an exclusive interview. He recounted more vivid details of the strange events that followed his radio appearances, including blacking out and waking with injuries. Mel also shared new insights he had gained over his long period of isolation. Based on historical records of the area he examined, Mel came to believe the hole on his land was no naturally occurring phenomenon. Rather, it seemed to be evidence of an intelligently engineered structure of immense proportions, he theorized it could be part of an underground tunnel or passageway system connecting to other locations far beyond his property boundaries. The perfect cylindrical shape and lack of bottom appeared too precisely constructed to be a normal sinkhole or shaft. Mel also came to think the interests intervening in his case, from the mysterious men to the government itself, were seeking to hide confirmed evidence of an extraterrestrial or secret military underground infrastructure. Whatever was down there, powerful groups wanted to keep then hidden. After resurfacing and sharing his story, Mel gained interest from others seeking to understand anomalous phenomena. In 2017, he was contacted by leaders of the Paiute Native American tribe in Nevada. The Paiute elders explained that for generations, their people had passed down legends of a sacred place with a bottomless hole on tribal lands. According to oral histories, the pit was connected to the underworld and held great spiritual importance. However, in the 1950s strange events occurred near the hole similar to Mel's experience. Unusual lights and sounds were witnessed, followed by military personnel appearing and blocking off access. All records of the hole were later wiped from tribal archives too. Intrigued by the parallels, Mel agreed to assist the Paiute in investigating their bottomless pit. He worked with tribal scientists to plan a research expedition. Special equipment like cameras, lasers, and sensors were brought to thoroughly document the site. In August 2017, Mel and the Paiute team located the anomalous hole's position using old maps. Just as the elders described, it appeared a perfectly cylindrical shaft, dropping endlessly into the earth. Sensors found abnormal electromagnetic signatures too. Lasers were unable to detect a bottom even at their maximum range below. Cameras lowered with lights revealed only a shaft of rock curving out of sight. Objects lowered down made no contact with anything, just like Mel's original hole. Samples taken from the surrounding rock showed unusual isotopic ratios, suggesting a different origin than normal geology. It appeared this hole was also artificially constructed rather than a natural formation. The Paiute elders' legends were validated. Whatever mysterious forces had concealed this site before, Mel and the tribe had unearthed compelling evidence it was no ordinary sinkhole. It strongly resembled the bottomless pit that had so bewildered Mel decades prior. To gather more insights, Mel and the tribe's scientists discussed lowering an animal down the hole with cameras. A sheep was selected, as its size would be better than a small rodent but not too large, the sheep was carefully lowered into the shaft using durable cable. Infrared cameras monitored its descent into the darkness. At first the sheep appeared calm, but as it went deeper, it grew increasingly disturbed and agitated. Beyond a few hundred feet, the infrared cameras showed the sheep's vitals spike to dangerous levels. It began desperately trying to climb the cable back up, but its panic only caused it to slip further down out of sight. Alarmed at the sheep's distress, the researchers hastily began reeling it back. After several tense minutes, the sheep suddenly shot up the shaft at high speed. To their greatest shock, a sheep which to have screamed seconds ago was dead. It baffled them and they kept asking questions about what has just happened to the sheep. They monitored the sheep closely and realized that its belly is moving. Being skeptical, they decided not to get close to the sheep. To their greatest surprise, they saw something coming out of the sheep's belly. A strange little creature that has never been seen before. Its eyes were large, its head somehow larger than the body, and it acted like it's pleading for help from someone to send it back into the hole. Mel and his team however, quickly evacuated the place due to the shocking incident that has just happened. When they got back with this information, the Paiute tribe were all terrified, witnessing their legends validated. They saw the hole as a sacred portal, 
and were grateful for Mel's help addressing their elders' concerns. Both sides agreed more study was needed to safely solve the enigma, 